What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today I am joined with Langella Kill to do the Marsman crew review for Dead Island 2. And obviously, this is a new title. This has been 10 years in the making that this game has finally been out, and uh, this is a continuation of the previous Dead Island game. Basically, it's one of those survival kind of zombie killing spree with some outrageous weaponry all across the West Coast, and this is going to be focused on Los Angeles. So this was a very interesting game to come off the bat, and we had a whole kind of preview for this in the uh, April, in the April games preview that we had on the channel. But me and Frank are gonna have our breakdown of the game, give our good, the bad. We're gonna give our official ratings and whether or not you should be buying this now, later, or not at all. And let's jump right into it with the good. And I'll start first. I feel like one of the best aspects of, of this game has to do with the realistic nature that this game had basically been playing with this entire time. So basically every single punch, every single hit of your weapon, you can see the effects of it. And you can kind of see a lot of the zombies kind of faces are broken, jaws busted, you know, you know, guts flying over the place. I feel like this was probably one of the most realistic kind of, uh, you know, game physics I've seen in a long time. And you can see that a lot of the, the effort, the, the amount of time that was spent on the physics definitely made it feel like it was really kind of really like extremely realistic as well as i really thought the environments i thought were pretty good i mean uh, there's have been some criticisms from people like moist critical as well as others that felt like that this was a quote unquote bland kind of environment but i didn't really feel that way i feel like a lot of the places that you visited here were really realistic and they kind of told a story of the of, of their own and i thought one of the really cool places here i mean now there's not a lot of cutscenes to go along with this, you know, game like that that really like drawn out cutscenes. There are some for sure, but you know, you can tell a story without even having to watch those. I mean, like the, the one of the areas that we went through um on you know when we were playing was actually this content creator's house and it was kind of like a look like a party mansion uh for these like podcast radio shows and you can kind of see that throughout the entire level that there's like a lot of like interesting little recordings and kind of like areas to explore and they told a story about what was going on there when the entire infection was spreading and i thought that was a really cool component i feel like if the game didn't really do emphasis on any like realism then you wouldn't even know or care what's going on but that's why i thought they did a good job with that realism and the the kind of how how much effort that was put into that but uh frank what do you think is a good thing that you felt about this game yeah, just to give a little bit more detail, it takes about 20 hours to finish the game, 25 to 30 hours to complete all the side quests. So there's some good bulk in this game when it comes to content and eight different weapon types. Obviously, there's a big focus on the melee weapons, right? Not so much guns. There's only six guns, but you also get to choose between six characters and, and different skill trees. So the customization um, I liked uh, from what I saw and kind of different ways to attack the game. Um, but like you said, the big thing is the physics with the gore physics with the zombies and, you know, physics with liquid like you can you know hunt zombies in different ways the drop kick was a really fun aspect in this game that we had a lot of fun with um playing around with on how to kind of destroy and maim zombies this is a mindless slaying uh zombie slaying type of game so those aspects i think are good in the setting i thought i agree with you on the setting um, i don't think it was as bland as people say it is but i think it showed a nice environment of what it is in los angeles yeah, I mean, like when you even the other component I felt like that was pretty cool was the gameplay. You kind of touched on the fact that like the interactions you have with the zombies is pretty straight up. Like it's not like it's a grand like let's mow down hundreds upon hundreds of zombies, but it's kind of like that the art of the duel. Like how do you how do you go about killing this horde of zombies that you're facing? How do you navigate this area without getting overrun? And I thought that the little date moment to moment gameplay there was pretty cool. Um, and obviously the vast w array of weaponry that you can kind of use and, and adjustments. To that. I feel like the, the, the a way you can upgrade your weaponry through the workbench was a pretty cool concept that most survival games basically have, but it's kind of just, I thought they did a good job with that. But with the good, we have to definitely talk about the bad. And when I'm thinking about the bad, one of the biggest things for me was the servers. The servers of this yeah. game are garbage. I feel like we, me and you played this game a lot and we are joining up and doing co-op. Um, play here and yeah, first three hours we dropped four times yeah just think about how server. just think of how frustrating that is i mean like you're, you're going through a level and you're just trying you're on a momentum swing you're doing well and all of a sudden you get kicked and then you know i'm the host of the party now i'm facing off against a horde of zombies who me and you were teaming up on originally 
And it's just like, it just feels like stupid because then you got to go through the whole process. You gotta yeah, it breaks your immersion. You know, yeah, it breaks your immersion into the game. And, and and that's the thing. Like, I thought they did a good job with like the things like you see both characters that you are literally have uh, talking to each other or even talking to the situation. And then all of a sudden one of them's just gone. Right. And you're like, how is it possible that for a, a game that's been waiting for a decade that this is the, you know, this is what you kind of give with the service. You got to make sure that stuff is on par and ready to roll. Uh, but what's the bad thing that you felt about this game, man? Yeah, the combat, I agree with you on the connection. Um, and again, that's our experience. We were playing on Xbox. Um, but I tell you what, I mean, yeah, we don't live at Verizon, but <laughs> we, we don't, we've we played many multiplayer co-op games and not had this issue. So that was weird on that part. And the combat you mentioned was fun, but I will say at moments and at times felt very clunky. The hit markers kind of felt a little bit off. Sometimes it was hard to tell when you were getting hit, like the impact didn't feel like and all of a sudden you get downed um, out of nowhere. So at times there was a lot of fun moments in gameplay, but there are also times where it just felt a little clunky and slow. Um, so th it was it was hard to find kind of the right line in between those two um, for me. So that, that was kind of a big bad. And the story, obviously the story, it's not meant to be a complex story, but some of the writing and the lines were very, very corny, yeah. reaching high levels of cringe. Yeah, I mean, that's like, the, I feel like that was what they're going for with that, the cringe level yeah, of just how, how dumb people sounded. And, and I guess that's a success, but yeah. yeah. It's like it's like that when you're when you're going into Dead Island, you're not expecting to see some sort of grand story that's going to make you cry yeah. at the event. You're going for some pl fun zombie killing action, and that was really what they're going for, you could tell. But let's jump to now our ratings, and obviously we're going to give this out of a, out of a, a 1 out of 10. Um, I feel like the gameplay was solid. It wasn't super fast. There were some clunkiness aspects like you already mentioned. And I feel like the upgradable weapons was really cool. And, and even the skill tree, depending on which character you are, you emphasize different points. I felt like that was a really cool thing they did. But the servers are completely shot. And at times, I felt like this was easy. You know, like we, we literally were, we went to the boss, we clapped the boss in like maybe less than a minute. And just yeah. to get there, it took, it took a while because the servers are trash. But it took a while just to get there and then when you finally get there you just clap the boss in a heartbeat i was kind of not not expecting that one but out of uh out of 10 i'd give this a 7.3 i thought this is generally roughly around the expectations metacritic was a 75 open critic was in 75 as well i feel like it's right around that ballpark of what people were expecting um in my opinion but what do you think man what was your rating for this yeah i mean you mentioned on our preview show this was my most anticipated game into this month and I can't say when I finished playing, I, I felt a little disappointed. I was wondering if this game could fill the void that Left 4 Dead did, um, more of an impact than Dying Light or Back for Blood. And I didn't think it felt that uh, it filled that void. I think it was just a different flavor, um, similar to those other games. I give it a seven out of ten. There was a lot of fun moments. I think it is at best playing with somebody else, but some of the clunkiness, the server issues that we ran into, and you know this this game just there were feel some parts are polished and some parts really are not and it just it, it just left you a little disappointed yeah i do agree with you but now the last part should you buy now later or not at all and i'll be honest i think later i think if these servers were fixed then i think the gameplay would have been a lot more fun uh i mean we had some fun times we were doing some outrageous stuff with major drop yeah. kicking dudes and and yeah. just throwing ourselves at, at, at zombies and it was fun to explore like we were looking into a lot of stuff but it definitely was a hamper to see like you, you just get hit with the you know connection loss and then you're like all right well now we got to sit here and do the whole process and it just it was it sucked because you you know you have momentum there and people were excited i mean overall a lot of people are buying this game because they they waited 10 years for the sequel to come out and it's like yeah. dude, you have all this momentum people like to see this game release but you want to have it released on a right note because then all of a sudden you just lose that. So I say buy later because it has some fun components, but you got to fix your servers or else it's going to just be a horrible launch overall. So um, that's my opinion. But Frank, what's yours here? Well, Ed, listen, they've sold over 1 million copies already, which is, again, it's a nice success for them. But we like to be honest here. Right? We want to give you the blunt, honest truth. Yep. And I'm going to buy later as well. I mean, this game is being sold standard edition 69.99 right 70 dollars. they have a uh, digital deluxe at 74.99 they have a hell a hell a hell something deluxe package which is 99.99 i mean yes this game has been through development hell it's gone through a lot of trouble but 
it's being charged at premium AAA game. So to me, that's the reason I'm buying later. It is not worth 70 plus dollars. Um, there's some fun aspects to it, but the fun does drive out with some of the flaws um, that hurts your immersion in this game. I do agree with you, man. But obviously, that's going to be it for a crew review. What do you think about Dead Island 2? Please, what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. You can find us on Twitch. We stream two to three days a week and that is located in the description below. You can also find our socials also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys.